Hello everyone, I think you can probably tell by my accent, you know, that I'm not actually from here. Uh, so if you can't understand me, just clap because this is going to be very informational and inspirational. <laughs> and if you don't think it's very inspirational and uh, informational, uh, it's probably because you can't understand me. So. <laughs> Uh, Prayer for Change, this is a non-profit that I've started recently, you know, working with all aspects of mental health, helping people tell their film, uh, helping people tell their stories through filmmaking, through the emotional aspects of all that, so it's a bit of a direction here, so everybody, what is this? A banana indeed. Well, what is it now? Sad face. Yes, it's a sad face. This is semiotics. This is uh, the study of meaning making, you know, symbolism. How our mind uh, perceives certain objects. You know, obviously it is a banana, but as I've changed it, here it becomes an unhappy face. Some people might even say that it's a mean face because of the, the angry eyes that are there. You know, and I myself, back in the days, was a very mean, unhappy, miserable banana. You know, mostly through post traumatic stress disorder. As was mentioned, I am from Northern Ireland. You know, growing up in Belfast uh, during the majority of the Troubles. Uh, living there for 26 years, um, if, you know, if you're not aware of it, it's all about the, the terrorist activities in order to try and get United, uh, the United Ireland. But well, I was stuck in the middle, mostly on the military side, so it didn't matter if I was Catholic or Protestant, you know, uh, all the, the conflict was directed towards me from either side. You know, living there for 26 years, I wasn't aware, I had no comparison of uh, how a normal life should be, it was just you know, every day seeing my, my friends, my family, you know, uh, killed or hearing on the news, uh, bombings on a daily basis. Didn't have any other comparison. Until I came to America, you know, I moved to Boston actually when the peace process started and the ceasefire uh, began. You know, and it was a wonderful thing because I didn't need to worry about where I needed to go that day. You know, I could walk down any street that I wanted. I could go to any pub that I wanted. I didn't have to worry why that car was parked there who was talking to me, why this girl was talking to me, or why this fellow was asking me to go and play soccer, football, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, that, and that's when my, my troubles, my post-traumatic stress, the hypervigilance, the anxiety, uh, the fear, the flashbacks, the avoidance, everything there started raising its head because in my, in my mind, you know, 90% of my being had been used to keep myself safe. You know, mostly hypervigilance. As I mentioned, you know, uh, worrying why people were talking to me, why that car was parked there, and all of that. So, so my mind started, you know, playing tricks on me, because the mind can be uh, a terrible thing sometimes. You know, mostly, you know, the flashbacks, the flashbacks that I was getting, um, looking back. With hindsight, you know, I can understand that the, the main image that I was dealing with was an amalgamation of many aspects, many memories, many situations that I that I got myself into. Um, and that flashback, my main image was me on the ground with the guy, you know, holding a gun to my head, you know, asking me the question, was I one thing or was I the other? If you say the wrong thing, trigger's pulled and you're away. You know, it doesn't really matter what what I was because there's so much conflict in the world today. You know, Israel, Palestine, you know, Catholic, Protestant, it's all religious based things. I know that people here in Utah seem to think that there's a, a real rivalry between BYU and the U of U. <laughs> but not really. There's nothing compared to the rest of the world. <laughs> so, uh, my flashbacks, I, 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 I couldn't get over that, no. So when things started going wrong, I was realizing this, that I'm not really functioning anymore. So what do I do? You know, you go to therapy, you go to psychologists, you go to psychiatrists, you go to support groups, you know, you take the tablets, the, the medication that you're given, and basically the way that works in America is you take the pills that they give you, and then they say, come back in 30 days, and if you're not any worse, we'll give you some new ones. So, but pharmaceuticals work for a lot of people, but they, they certainly didn't work for me. But, uh, you know, I spent my entire life, my entire time, all my money, you know, trying to find an answer, trying to find a solution to help me along my way. But nothing would resonate with me. So I basically gave up. I decided, you know, I'm gonna just try and learn to live an acceptable life because this is what I've got to deal with. 
I'm not going to move on because nothing's helping me. So I've got to learn to live an acceptable life. So I gave up trying to find the answer, and I just started working, concentrating on my own creative work. You know, working in film, uh, working in, in design, architecture, communication. You know, just trying to find ways to, to look at that. And um, an amazing thing happened. You know, I started realizing that um, there was underlying messages in my work, and it was all my own story, you know, my own pathway to try and get to recovery. Uh, we'll get into that in a little second, you know, no matter how hard I tried to destroy my life, you know, through substance abuse or substance misuse that I was trying to use so I could, you know, sleep, so I could get over the, the flashbacks and the nightmares and the night terrors, but my subconscious was trying to sabotage me into recovery by telling me these stories through my narratives. You know, I could connect the plots. And, um, but back to the banana. So, I was at a party, begrudgingly made to go to a party. Didn't want to go. At this point, I was so unfunctional. You know, I said I tried to find the acceptable life, but really what I found was the unfunctional life. Couldn't communicate, couldn't do anything, just wanted to stay in the basement and drink the days away. But I was forced to go to this party. And I went, and it was, a, it was great, you know, I got to sit in the corner, not talking to anybody, not communicating, and of course, nobody could talk to me because of uh, what I'd become. But I saw these two little children, must have been about five or six years old, and they were running around with bananas, you know, using the bananas as guns, you know, reenacting war, playing along. So I grabbed uh, the two things that were close to me, it was a children's party, so I got some crayons, some crayons, and I had an old envelope in my pocket. And I quickly sketched a picture of me on the ground and the guy with the gun. But instead of the gun, I drew a banana. And this is the actual image. You know, the scale was all wrong. I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. But, you know, you got the green guy and the red guy, two different fellows, but the banana is there, you know, removing the fear of the gun. And I worked with this image, you know, I studied it. I changed it into many different mediums, you know, uh, digital animation, uh, sculpture, and just, just working into different forms. And here's a couple that I work with, you know. You can see just the silhouette on the left-hand side, center section is just uh, tonal colors, and then more of a photorealism on the right. Um, at this point, I started using the same figures because I was working along the lines that were all the same. You know, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, or what the perceived beliefs are, but these are all the same. They're all the same. And when I put this together, it reminded me of a really strange Charlie's Angels episode. <laughs> uh, but, um, but as I studied this, and as I looked at it, you know, and drew it, and communicated to it, I was able to work out two idiotic things. The two idiotic things about this image is one, he's trying to kill me with a banana. You know, he's not going to do too well there. And he might as well put the skin on the ground and hope that I slip on him and find my head. <laughs> but uh, two is he's trying to kill me because of a uh, perception. You know, I've done nothing to this guy. All I am is myself. You know, he's trying to kill. He's trying to kill an entity that I represent him. You know, he hates me. He hates that entity, but only because he's been told to hate over the years. And I began to understand the ridiculousness of this, you know? And when things are really ridiculous, there's comedy there, you know, there's humor. And I was able to laugh at it. Because laughter is the best medicine after all. And um, I was able to, to, to get away from the fear and the, the scariness of it. But, you know, so I have moved on, wonderful things have happened, you know? But don't get me wrong, I still do, you know, have my bad days, as most people are reading. You know, sometimes I can even take the banana and, uh, you know, eat it, have a tasty, nutritious snack. <laughs> I hope, it hasn't happened yet, but I hope that down the line, I'll be able to share the banana with, uh, you know, my imagined antagonist. But, uh, you know, amazing things have happened to me, you know, now, leading an unfunctional life, where I was in the basement, you know, just completely solitary, drinking away. But now I can function, I can communicate. You know, I can stand up here in front of you lovely lads and lasses and, and interact with you. But what I've learned through filmmaking 
is the emotional power of film. You know, we all know the feeling of goosebumps. Um, goosebumps on our, on, our, on our arms when our hairs are starting up, when the bad guy is getting the way and the good guy is just about to get him. We all know when we hold our breath, when the monster is creeping around in the dark. You know, all films have been inspired from something, and everything can inspire you to do something. So this has led me to create a nonprofit, Create Real Change, where I'm working with veterans, um, addiction recovery, working in the prison systems, and I'm helping people tell their stories through emotions rather than situations. Um, so basically, my flashbacks, my memories, they still have them. They're just memories. But it's basically like watching uh, a film playing out in my head, which I need to change. So we'll quickly go through this video that I've done. Thank you. Sitting in the coffee shop, minding my own business. I didn't even notice the waitress. It can't be that hot, I think. A drink? This is not good. Damn my waitress. She should have warned me. Didn't ask for it. I didn't even want the coffee. No, no. No, no, no. Feels like my blood is boiling. All I can think of is red hot lava. But then, I have an idea. Excuse me, can I have something to cool with? Certainly, she says. That's how we create real change. So basically, in my flashbacks and my memories, it's fear, there's anger, and there's pain. But I'm also scared, angry, and experience pain in many other things. So that's what we're doing, is, is transferring the emotion into a narrative and changing that narrative. But as you can see, once I realize things are wrong, I ask for some ice, pull down the coffee, and I'm okay. And over the years, this changes a lot of things. So, uh, Martin Sullivan, who is the father of positive psychology, said, if technology can, in the next decade or two, increase the pleasant life, the good life, and the meaningful life, it would be good enough. If entertainment can be diverted to also increase positive emotion, meaning eudaimonia, it would be good enough. And if design can increase positive emotion, eudaimonia, and flow and meaning, what we're all doing together will become good enough. Now, in my time as an architect, as a product designer, as a community outreach specialist, my core, everything that I've learned has come down to finding ways to make things better to help people. And that's what I'm trying to do with Create Real Change. Thank you.